Tolkien's elves have had direct access to the source of all information, the Valar or Elvish gods, along with thousands of years of life and constant research, lore, and study. Why are they still stuck with slightly better than average medieval technology? Well, if you ignore the War of the Ring or the War of the Gems, it actually makes sense from an immortal's viewpoint that is difference in values. The Amish don't embrace technology very fast at all. This is because they religiously value their community over everything else. Phones, lights, and motor cars allow for easier access to the outside world, and like with so many communities in the US, they fear they will become fractured and broken up as people move away for more money. This would end their community and culture and potentially their religion. At one point they were contemporary with technology, but saw new technology as a threat to their community. So they slowed down on embracing technology, sometimes giving new technology a trial run to see if it would damage community ties, sometimes outright banning it. Now many communities can have solar panels and lights because they're not part of the wider grid. Some can have air-powered pneumatic tools because pressurized air can't be used to power cars or electronics. They value community over technology, and so they're slow to accept any new technology. Tolkien was a huge environmentalist. If you read his rough drafts, he was even working on a sequel to The Lord of the Rings, occurring after the death of King Aragorn and Queen Arwen, where a new generation that didn't remember the struggles and horrors of War of the Ring, quite similar to the modern alt-right trolls, had started a new Sauron-worshipping cult as a form of rebellion because they felt it was edgy and probably triggering to the old stuffy war elders whose parents and grandparents were war veterans and dressed up and acted like orcs going around and destroying nature for fun. Elves and Ents looked down on men, dwarves, and orcs for being so destructive of nature in pursuit of technology or crafting. Their values are ecology over technology. They had to live for decades with any environmental damage they did, while humans just don't. They die too quickly. Their technology was much more passive, and was much more background. Lighted crystals, possibly similar to modern LEDs, palantirs, seeing stones that use crystals as almost an elvish psychic smartphone, ultra-strong swords that can keep an edge for generations that glow when orcs are near, high-tech weaponry and surveillance, all using crystal-based, potentially nanotechnology, but they never bothered to build vehicles, tanks, aircraft, or missiles to take on Morgoth and later Sauron, who had no problem destroying nature. Perhaps they feared an arms race that would open up a mega-scale decimation of nature that was irreversible. Or perhaps I'm just overthinking a work of fiction. My guess is that before an elvish society adopts a new technology, they have to prove that the technology will have a minimal impact on the environment, probably mapping out data points to determine if it will mess with the native species and populations. Though when they do make a new technology, it is superior to anything we have now. I postulated back in the day that their use of crystals and nanotech was driven by fungal or bacterial growth, layer by layer for perhaps decades, to get the precise results they wanted in crystalline fashion so they didn't have to create large batches of harsh chemicals like we do for our industrial products, which leads to lots of waste. I called this mycoalchemy back in my geekier days, and for an immortal race of people, this might be a great alternative. But our lives are short, and we would like to enjoy our work before we die. So this approach to science is unrealistic. They have bred super smart horses, birds, and dogs that can understand speech and on a rare occasion speak. They can heal anything unless it's human aging and evil. They even made rings that can cause plants to grow and make everyone around them happier. Food that is nutritious and won't go stale. They could have any of the technology we have at this point in time easily, but decided not to for most likely environmental reasons. Possibly another reason why they left this realm. As man expanded, we would destroy the nature around us. Knowing Tolkien, this is quite a rational reason for their leaving. Perhaps in the future, with life extension, we too will figure out the environmental importance with a long life, and doing with less even though we have the tech to do so, because we will see all the consequences in our lifetime. However, until then, we'll just continue to destroy the planet like orcs. And speaking of elves, I found an easy app-making programming language called MIT App Inventor. Google put it out initially, but then MIT took over stewardship of it. It's much easier than Android Developer, and I'm currently working in development of my untested What is Activism game, which simulates and explains in easy terms that most can understand how change occurs in a country, and it requires a lot of moving parts and organizing. It's currently almost at Phase 1A, which is 
to be able to play against yourself, and then as time progresses, I'll make it playable against AI and then each other. After that comes Phase 2, which involves things you can do personally to impact elections or public discourse, and I have up to seven phases in the pipeline long term. But what the heck does this have to do with L's? Well, usually when you learn a new language, you're tasked with writing boring and useless code projects to get the hang of the system. Instead, I created an Elvish calendar app, which I was able to publish, and thank goodness I did, because learning how to make Google App Console happy requires a minor in computer law or a bunch of trial and error. Anyway, if you want to try my calendar app, go to Google Play and type Elvish calendar in quotes or Imladris, which is another word for Rivendell and you'll see this leaf icon. Please download and rate it so it can be more easily found. It also has an easy donate button if you felt like donating, but don't want to do it as a subscription every month. Sadly, it's just for Android right now, though I have a feeling my game is going to get too big, and I'm going to have to learn to use Unity, which does work on iPhones as well, and to learn that, I'll almost certainly rebuild my calendar app there. Over time, I may need help working on programming once I get through a few phases of the game, and if you have Android or Unity experience and wish to offer your services to a good cause, please get in touch. Thank you, and I will keep you informed about the state of the game and when you can test it out. I may also have a beta test phase so that you can try it and tell me why it sucks so I can make it suck less. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy my app.